Okay, so what I want to do real quick is I want to go over the creation of our basic logic gates. Those are going to consist of our elementary gates and some composite gates. Now, the elementary gates are just going to be very, very basic unary binary logic gates like and, or, not, and zor, I think. And then we're going to get to composite gates, which are going to be our multiplexers and our demultiplexers. Those are going to be very, very basic implementations of them. But the catch here is that we're only going to be able to use basic NAND gates to create all of this. So we're going to start with just a single NAND gate. That's all we have access to. We have multiple NAND gates, but we don't have the concept of not, or, and, or any of this to start with. So we start with just a single NAND gate and we have to create everything else from there. We can do that because NAND is what's known as function complete and we'll explain more on that in just a moment. So let's go ahead, swap on over and look at these slides. So just basic logic gates, not a whole lot going on. So like I said, all we have to start is just this basic NAND. Now if you take a look at the schematic, you can see that we are using this binary operation. You can see we have input one and input two here and creating a unary operation from that. We only have one unary operation that we're gonna be dealing with, that being not. Now the way that this works is if we take this NAND gate up here, take a look at it, we do say one and NAND zero, we end up getting a one as the output. Same thing we do zero and one. However, the moment we do zero, with zero and one with one, so if we have identical inputs, the two zeros become one, the two ones become zero. So what if we just tie off these inputs like so and pass in a one? Well, it's gonna travel in this wire, hit this connector, split both of them, one and one becomes zero, and if we do the same thing with zero, same thing happens. Two zeros go in, and a one comes out. So now, using a single NAND gate, we've created the implementation of a NOT gate. So we have the ability of NAND, and we have the ability of NOT. So, if we look at this, we can use this to implement the double involution law, and cancel these out, and essentially make a basic and gate, Ooh. and gate. So if we get it, this is zero. Uh, why is it not? This is two, one with one, because these are the only inputs where a one should come out for an and gate. So if we do one and one, we get zero, and then we want to pass that zero into this not, we end up with a one, and then anything that has a zero inside of this will have a one as a result, complemented to a zero. So now we've created an AND gate. So now we have concept of NAND, we have NOT, and we have AND. So we don't need AND just yet to make this next one, but this next one and how we make it is actually very, very, very important to the entire system and the entire concept of this course and why we can create anything from a NAND gate. So this gate Let's take a look at the input. So let's do zero and zero. So zero, negate that, is going to become a one, one. So one NAND it with one, we know it's going to be zero. The moment we put anything that's a one in here though, we're going to have a NAND with a zero, which gives us a one. And essentially what we created is an OR gate. Now, why OR is so important is because the NAND by itself gives us multiplication in the form of the AND, and then it gives us negation in the form of the complement. You've already seen that we create a NAND gate and we create an AND gate. So we've already created these two concepts just from NAND by itself. And those are pretty straightforward in how to do that. But OR is a little bit different, so we need something called the Morgan's Law. So the Morgan. And what that does is essentially, let's say we have negation here, and let's give us an input of x. Let's do or, which is the addition. And when we do this, we end up with the result of negated x and did 
multiplied, negated y. So essentially, your operation is going to swap from addition to multiplication, multiplication to addition, whichever one, and then the negation we applied to both inputs in the parentheses. So what's happening here is you have the NAND and we are negating the actual input. So what we have to create x ord with y is the same as saying negation, which is this complement part of the NAND, negated x anded and negated y. So you see this negation applies to both the x and the y, so they'll cancel out. So you have x with y, and their multiplication will become addition. So these are logically equivalent. So we can very easily, with two knots and a NAND, create the concept of OR, which gives us the final one that we need for full completeness of multiplication, negation, and addition. So those are the three aspects that we care about to get a functionally complete system and NAND by itself can give us all of those. So that's why this entire course can exist on the basic principle of a NAND gate. So those are the three kind of really important ones here. Everything else from that is just us being able to do any Boolean expression as a result of having those three. And the first step is this one where there's no real Boolean law being applied like double involution, double complement is another name for it, or De Morgan's. This is just manipulating our inputs to a specific output. In this case, let's take a, uh, let's do a one and one. So one hits this point, it's gonna travel, we're gonna get zero as a result. Uh, it's gonna travel down this wire. A one here. One's gonna go inside this not zero comes on the other side and then goes up a here so now we have zero and it was one that's gonna be zero one and it was zero zero so zero or zero zero so essentially what we have what we're creating here is a zor gate so anytime i put in one with a one i should get a zero zero with a zero should be a zero and if they defer, then I should get a one on the result. So we look at that with one, zero. Well, immediately, if we want to kind of shorthand this, we can see that zero is going to go into this AND gate. So I don't have to worry about that. We just know that zero is going to be there as a result. So now we just care about the bottom one. So let's take a look. One is going to be a result of this NOT gate. Follow this down. One, one AND with one. One, zero ORD with one. One. So this is just taking our gates, manipulating them a bit, and we end up creating a ZOR gate. So we have access to knots, ands, ors, we have a functionally complete system, we create whatever we want with just a bit of manipulation and a little bit of know-how. So ZOR is a pretty good example of that. Now, moving from our elementary gates, we move to our multiplexers and our demultiplexers, also known as composite gates. So we commonly see them in hardware design and communication networks. But the gist of this is they work as almost like if statements for users. So that is through the use of these two select pins. And that is what makes these two gate types so critical. Being able to choose two different or one of two different inputs or one of two different types of outputs. If that makes sense, hopefully. But we'll take a look. So, looking at the logic of this, we have if cell equals zero, out is going to be A, otherwise it'll be B. And that's based on this mux right here. So let's take a look. Let's do zero with a one. And if I do a select pin of one, and take a look at this, it's not going to be A because that would need to be zero before we get out of B, which is a one. So this mux will have an output of one. Whereas if I do a select pin of zero with the same inputs, I end up with the output of A, which is zero. So you're always going to want to have two deferring inputs on muxes, or else the whole use case of it is irrelevant because two zeros, well, you're always going to choose a zero or a zero, you get zero. Same thing with two ones, you'd always get one no matter what. So the only reason you ever really care for muxes 
So you want to choose two different types of inputs. If they're identical, well, you're going to choose the same thing. Now, moving to demultiplexers is a similar concept, but different approach, where we're going from two different inputs to one output, we're going from one input to two different types of outputs. So if, well, shorthand this, let's look at this. If cell equals zero, or cell equals equals zero, so it means if our select pin is zero, then the ordered pair of AB, like this, would be n and then zero. Conversely, if cell equals one, AB ends up being zero n. Okay? So, one thing to note is if your input is ever zero, you are guaranteed to have an order pair of zero, zero, because your input will be zero, so it'd be zero, zero, or zero, zero. So, what we care about is if it's one. Now if we do zero, order pair we n zero, so it would be one, zero. Whereas if it is one, we end up with zero, one. So again, we just care about where are we placing the one? Will it be A, will it be B? We'll figure that out. And then we have the schematic for this, which if we just take a look at it real quick, we can tell we have a cell. That means it's a composite gate, obviously. And then we can tell that we have two distinct inputs, which tells us that it is a mux gate. So if I do a zero for the one, because we want two deferring inputs, then I should get either zero or one based on what this select pin is. So if I do a select of zero, looking back at the logic, zero, one, believe that's what I did. Yep, zero and one. Then based on the select pin of zero, I should get out of A as zero. So let's see if that's what happens. So drop this down and goes in there. Now that this result's gonna be a zero. One here, zero here, we have two ands with zeros, which means or zero and zero, and we end up with a zero. Now let's see what happens if I do one, because that means I should get a one as a result. It's a little bit different, but not too much. So one goes in here, and then a one goes to here. So we know if one is a result, and that gives us a one as the output, doesn't even matter what this AND gate is, but we can just take a look at it and tell that it'd be a zero. So we end up zero or with one is one. So that's MUPS's, how the logic from previous slide actually evade with a schematic that you could recreate in hardware. The next one, order or process elimination, I should tell you that this one is just going to be the D multiplexer, D MUPS, but you can also tell there's only one input and a cell, which is also an input, but just one distinct input, and a select pin. So the reason that we know, or the way that we know that two uh, zero will end up with two zeros as a result, you see that it's gonna pass through this wire, zero, pass down this wire, zero. Both of these have zero, which guarantees that the result will be zero. So let's take a look at something a little bit more interesting with the input of one. So let's see, select pin of zero, just follow the select pin, zero, that guarantees an output of two, uh, output two is zero. And then we have one passed in, you one here, and then a one here based on this not gate. So zero goes in here, one comes out, one goes in the and, gives us one. Same thing, well, similar thing, not exact same. If we do one here, we have one passing through here to here, one passing through here to here, one, 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 and then the one comes into this not gate, becomes a zero, and with the zero gives us zero. So that is essentially all the gates that we're gonna talk about in this particular section, but they are the most fundamental basic gates that we can create outside of just a basic NAND gate, obviously, because we would start with that. We're not gonna be creating that. You just do some transistors and stuff. Again, this right here is just a breadboard implementation of a NAND gate. There, if I wanted to, I can string a bunch of these breadboards together, like I did through these schematics, and create all of these much more complex logic gates, just the same way I have them written out in the schematic. But, that would be a little bit silly to do, so we're just gonna simulate it for now. 
no big deal. But this covers why we care about a NAND gate, how we hate uh, anything that uses NOR because, well, the NOR is also function complete. It just gets a short end of the stick in terms of a lot of uh, systems because a lot of things are built around NAND, even though NOR can do a lot of the same functionality because it's all the same functional laws. Because if you apply it to Morgans to NOR, you end up with AND and you already have addition and complement. So you could recreate the entire system starting with NOR if you wanted to. We're just going to focus on NAND here, but we created AND, NOT, AND, OR. That's a function complete system. We also have NAND to work with. If you want to create the rest of them, you could. So we created SOAR, just to kind of show that this is a more complex Boolean expression that we can make from these three function complete gates. And then we created the MUX and the DMUX as our more user interface that we will definitely see later on. So. This is just kind of the start of creating a more complex combinational logic system, and we will definitely expand on this in the next one. So I hope you learned something, and then I will see you in the next one. Bye.